Nearly a century ago, humans built skyward for the first time at an unprecedented rate. It was the age of skyscrapers. First, the 71-story Bank of Manhattan Trust Building up in New York City, followed by the Chrysler Building with 77 floors, and finally, the Empire State Building with 102 floors. It was a moment of prosperity and promise in America. Standing at drafting tables, engineers and architects designed these structures using reinforced concrete and daring architecture. Then. Everyday laborers built them higher and higher into the sky, eating their lunches in the clouds. And now, we might just be doing it again. At the beginning of this month, SpaceX technicians and engineers stacked a Starship and its Super Heavy booster for the first time. The full stack measured about 120 meters, or approximately the height of a 30-story building. The only difference? This skyscraper was not secure to the bedrock dozens of meters below its foundation. This skyscraper was meant to scrape the sky as it flies. Much work remains ahead before the vehicle will launch. In the near term, more heat shield tiles must be applied to Starship's stainless steel exterior. These are needed to manage heating during atmospheric re-entry. The company also has technical work to do on the extensive ground systems needed to fuel the vehicle. Then there are myriad tests of the Super Heavy booster itself, including verification of its ability to withstand high pressure and static test firings of the propulsion system. However, the biggest hurdle of all will be clearance from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is working with SpaceX to conduct an environmental assessment of launching such a mammoth rocket from these South Texas wetlands. After a draft of this assessment is published, there will be an approximately 30-day period for public comments. This will be followed by other steps including a determination by the FAA on whether SpaceX's proposed environmental mitigations will be enough or if more work is required. So why does SpaceX need the FAA's approval? And why does it take so long to approve? The FAA is in charge of regulating all aspects of aviation from traditional passenger airlines to rocket launches in space. Since space vehicles share the same airspace as airliners, the FAA is responsible for making sure everything is carried out safely and that the public is protected. But the FAA's involvement with air travel is very different from launching rockets. To put it into perspective, the FAA handles around 16 and a half million flights per year. In the space world, the number of launches expected to take place this year is around 50. But now that space tourism is becoming a real thing, this number will start to grow rapidly in the next few years. SpaceX has a plan to operate Starship with hundreds of passengers traveling each day. With the FAA's current rules, this would be impossible. However, nowadays, getting a license isn't a quick process. It can take the FAA up to 180 days to review it. That's around six months. This process involves a huge amount of testing and verification before they can give the all clear. In order to operate a space port, the FAA also needs to do intense environmental checks to make sure rocket launches won't destroy or disrupt any nearby wildlife. Even if a license is granted, it only covers that particular rocket for that specific location, assuming that the rocket will follow a similar trajectory for all of its launches. If a rocket is to be launched, launch from a different location, a new license is needed. All of this takes a lot of time, and as private space companies continue to make huge advancements, the FAA is starting to fall behind. Which leads me to wonder, how has the FAA hampered SpaceX's recent launches? In December of 2020, SpaceX was attempting to launch and land their first ever Starship prototype. The FAA had worked with SpaceX and granted them a launch license, but they could only launch under certain weather conditions. Just minutes before SN8 took off, the FAA told SpaceX to cancel the launch. SpaceX employees at Mission Control ignored this message since they thought the weather was fine and that the FAA inspector didn't have the latest weather data. After an impressive launch, SN8 had a hard landing and ended in a massive explosion. 
Although no one was injured, the FAA was angry that SpaceX had ignored their launch requirements, and they did stipulate that an FAA inspector must be present for every flight of Starship from Boca Chica. This led to the launch of SN11 being delayed because the FAA inspector couldn't make it down to Boca Chica in time. SpaceX clashed with the FAA again when it started building a launch tower without permission. The structure itself went up extremely quickly with the usual SpaceX urgency. However, the FAA has cautioned SpaceX that after the environmental evaluation is completed, it may need to make significant changes to the tower. Despite this, SpaceX continues to accelerate the construction of the tower and related infrastructure. And most recently, with Starship's first orbital flight, it's still unclear how long they'll have to wait for the approval. With a rapid and ever-changing launch schedule, these kinds of requirements stand in the way of SpaceX's progress. So, what is Elon Musk's reaction to this incident? Elon Musk sees this as a big issue for the future. In January, he claimed that the FAA's rules are outdated and only made sense in the past when there were only a handful of rocket launches every year. He said, under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. In addition, on August 7th, SpaceX founder Elon Musk sent a clear message to the FAA and other federal regulators. One evocative photo, in particular, drove home his message to anyone watching. It showed workers standing beneath Starship as it was lowered onto the first stage rocket. In releasing a black and white version, Musk knew exactly what he was doing in hearkening back to the age of skyscrapers. The 21st century skyscrapers are being built right now, the photo screamed, by modern engineers and welders. Such rockets won't be found in PowerPoints or wooden mock-ups any longer. They are living breathing machines, nearly ready to breathe fire. To the FAA, Musk seemed to be saying, federal regulators must do their part to ensure the future arrives on schedule. Just as the 20th century skyscrapers marked the beginning of a new era and eventually launched America into a prosperous future of finance, communication, marketing, and more, the 21st century now beckons. The skyscraper age has now given way to the space age. Holding back Starship means holding back this progress. Musk wanted regulators to understand. For no longer does our vision stop in the clouds. It extends far, far beyond them. During the last five decades, humans have begun to explore the solar system. Now it is time to extend commerce there and settle humans on new worlds. Some people oppose this vision, of course, but Musk is counting on the government ultimately being on the side of industry and progress. And so Musk sent a clear message about it. We are ready. We are only waiting for you, FAA. Without actually saying anything at all, the photos did all of the talking. No one can deny that the FAA is beneficial to airplanes. However, if we want hundreds of rockets to launch and land every day around the world, the FAA will have to dramatically enhance its procedures. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time. Oh,